Silicon Valley Bank has lost over $80 billion of value in 24 hours. I'm going to give you an explain like I'm five explanation of what is actually happening and how this went down. First, some quick stats in case you're unfamiliar with Silicon Valley Bank. Silicon Valley Bank is the bank for founders. They went from $60 billion in deposits to over $180 billion in 2022. They work with over 50% of venture capital funded startups. With all of that money rolling in, Silicon Valley Bank wanted to put that money to work. So they ended up buying $80 billion of mortgage-backed securities, which had a yield or return of 1.5%. Now that worked until the U.S. government put that plan into a tailspin. With every rate hike when the U.S. government increased interest rates, the return that you could get from government bonds kept increasing. So which would you rather buy? Silicon Valley Bank's mortgage-backed securities, which are really risky with a return of 1.5%, or U.S. government bonds, which are backed by the U.S. government with a return of close to 5%. Number two, right? Since Silicon Valley Bank was in a more precarious position than before, they decided to sell some securities to create a bit of a safety net. The idea was to free up a bit of capital and give themselves some breathing room and some cushion. Now, normally, that wouldn't have been that big of a deal, but they didn't know that at that same time, a business in San Diego was failing, and that business would take it down with them. That business is Silvergate Bank, one of the biggest banks in crypto, and one of its biggest customers had just failed, FTX. The FTX crash led to customers pulling $8 billion from Silvergate Bank in January. So on March 8th, Silvergate closed its stores. The same day Silicon Valley Bank announced its safety net where they had sold some equity in order to create this cushion. Silicon Valley Bank was proud of this announcement. They had done something prudent. They had created this cushion or safety net and generated $21 billion for the company. They put out the press release but could not dream of the reaction that they actually got from customers. The news sent startups into panic. The bank that keeps their cash safe had just warned them that they now need a safety net. And this announcement is on the heels of the FTX collapse, 100,000 in tech layoffs, global recession fears, and now Silvergate's failure. Customers scrambled to pull out their money from Silicon Valley Bank, and this led to what is called a bank run, where customers go to pull out their money, but the money isn't there. And that spooks more customers to pull out their money, but the money also isn't there. So even though Silicon Valley Bank did not have a liquidity problem, the market and customers acted as if they did, making matters worse. Only 2.7% of Silicon Valley Bank deposits are FDIC insured. That means 97.3% of those funds are not backed and might be gone. What's wild about this is Silicon Valley Bank went from one of the most important banks in the startup world with over 8,500 employees to a company down 80 billion plus in value on the verge of being sold for scraps. The stock is falling so fast that Google can't even populate the stock chart in real time. To make matters worse, the broader banking sector is also being slammed with the risk of contagion, but others think that risk is short-lived. At the end of the day, for the last decade, Silicon Valley Bank has been one of the largest partners to the entire startup community, founders, investors, and more. Silicon Valley Bank going under would be detrimental to the entire startup community. So here's to genuinely wishing and hoping they figure things out.